Miss Universe is only a couple of weeks away and with that I thought it would be interesting to look through my current home country's history at Miss Universe throughout the years. If you guys didn't know I was born in South Africa and I currently live in Namibia. I've been living here for about I would say 10 years now. Wow, it's been such a long time. And obviously I've absolutely fallen in love with this country and Namibia has a pretty rocky history at Miss Universe, I'm not going to lie, but we did manage to get at least one win throughout the years. So without further ado, let's get into the history of Namibia at Miss Universe. So if you guys know anything about Namibia, it's that the Miss Namibia organization have always held the license for Miss Universe in Namibia. They also hold the license for Miss World and very recently they also obtained the license for Miss Earth. But in 1980 Miss Namibia was Bernice Tembu and she was the very very first Miss Namibia and she was supposed to go to Miss Universe 1980. If you guys watched my recent video all about South Africa's history at Miss Universe, then you would know that things started to go very badly for South Africa at Miss Universe during the 80s and for South Africa during pretty much everything during the 80s, of course, because of apartheid. Now, what many people do not know is that Namibia used to be a South African territory. It used to be a South African protectorate meaning that Namibia was pretty much under South African rule and for that reason apartheid sort of legislation bled into Namibia as well. Now in 1980 South Africa and the South African girls because remember there were mul multiple so there was the main Miss South Africa then there was also Miss Poputatwana as well as Miss Transke they were all denied visas for South Korea which was the host country for Miss Universe 1980 because of course the South Korean government was very much anti-apartheid and did not vibe with any of that at all and because Namibia was still a South African protectorate at the time Namibia was not granted a visa for South Korea either meaning that Namibia's very first Miss Universe candidate Bernice Tembu was not allowed to go and compete at Miss Universe 1980 because Namibia was a South African protectorate which I think is very very sad. But the next year in 1981 was actually the first official time that Namibia went and competed at Miss Universe and Namibia was represented by Antoinette Knutze who unfortunately went unplaced. And in 1982, 1983 and 1984 unfortunately Namibia got unplacements as well through Desiree Kotze. Astrid Klotsch and Peter Harley Peters. Unfortunately, all three of these women went unplaced. Again, if you guys watched my video all about South Africa's history at Miss Universe, our countries are very much combined still at this time because Namibia only later on got independence from South Africa. In 1985, South Africa was banned from Miss Universe because of apartheid. And unfortunately, Namibia, you know, even though Namibia wasn't wasn't even guilty or making any sort of decisions in what was going on in South Africa, Namibia was banned as well because it was a South African protectorate. And during this time anyway, Namibia had the whole border war thing going on against South Africa. So it's it was all very difficult during this time anyway. So from 1985 Namibia did not compete at Miss Universe but in 1990 luckily if you are Namibian then you would know this is the year that we officially gained independence from South Africa. So even though South Africa was only officially allowed back at Miss Universe in 1994 because that's when apartheid officially ended, Namibia was allowed back four years earlier in 1990 because we had gained independence from South Africa in that year and Namibia was now 
its own country. Unfortunately, however, when Namibia came back in 1991 through Renal Liebenberg, Namibia was unplaced, but in 1992, Michelle McLean came and changed the game for Namibia. Not only was Michelle McLean Namibia's only Miss Universe ever, but she was also Namibia's highest placement at Miss World ever. I know this is Namibia's history at Miss Universe, not Miss World, but it needs to be said, this woman was such an incredible contestant. She's literally one in a million and she did amazing things for Namibia especially at Miss Universe of course getting our one and only crown to date yes spoiler alert do not expect any more winners from this point forward because Michelle McLean was the only one. In 1993 Anya Schroeder unfortunately went unplaced but in 1994 Barbara Kachipara actually got the Miss Congeniality Award unfortunately went unplaced but at least we can say that namibia has gotten a miss congeniality award which by the way south africa doesn't have a miss congeniality award i did a whole video the other day on all of the miss congenialities from 1952 up until 2019 which was the last time the title of miss congeniality was handed out i suppose they'll be bringing it back uh, soon but South Africa and all that time never got a Miss Congeniality Award, but Namibia actually did through Barbara Kahajipara in 1994, which I felt was very sweet, very nice. Unfortunately, Namibia doesn't have the best track record at Miss Universe. So in 1995, Patricia Burt went unplaced. In 1996, Fagma Absalom went unplaced in 1997. Shea Shipanga went unplaced in 1998. Rita Reinders went unplaced in 1999. Vanda Kachuangwa went unplaced. And in 2000, Mia de Klerk went unplaced as well. Now, for some reason, in 2001, Namibia did not compete at Miss Universe. But in 2002, Namibia was back with Michelle Hayter, who unfortunately, you guessed it, went unplaced. In 2003, however, Ndapewa Alphonse managed to reach the top 10 at Miss Universe, which, guys, this is Namibia's second highest placement at Miss Universe ever to date. In fact, in fact, you guys want to know a terrifying piece of reality Ndapewa Alphonse's top 10 placement in 2003 was the last time that Namibia placed at Miss Universe I know it's insane it was like what it's next year it's like it's 20 years ago already the last time that Namibia placed it don't get me wrong Namibia has been competing on and off at Miss Universe so this is just crazy the rest of this video I of course will be sharing the contestants that represented Namibia but just know there is not another placement or special awards in the cards which is absolutely heartbreaking because Namibia has such great women I just don't think that the Miss Namibia organization, especially in recent years, either support their winners enough or choose the right winners to begin with. Because we've had some great contestants at Miss Namibia. You know, Jana Hainish in 2019, and she was, she was not sent to any competition that Miss Namibia holds the license to. But then she is chosen as Miss Supranational Namibia and subsequently places as the first runner-up at Miss Supranational. I definitely think that there, are, there have definitely been some women who could have at least placed for Namibia, but there have also been some women who have won Namibia who could have definitely placed had they had the right support from Miss Namibia. And I'll get to that later because there was one very brave contestant a couple of years ago who did call out the Miss Namibia organization in a very public way. And we'll get into that later. So from Ndapewa Alphonse onward, in 2004, Namibia did not compete at Miss Universe for some reason, but in 2005, they were back with Adele Basson who went unplaced 
In 2006, it was Anna Svetlanda Nashandi who went unplaced. In 2007 and 2008, Namibia did not compete. In 2009, we were back with Happy Ntalamo who went unplaced, unfortunately. In 2010 and 2011, Namibia did not compete at Miss Universe. But in 2012, we were back with Takana Nkandi, who went unplaced. And in 2013, it was Polina Malulu, who went unplaced, unfortunately. In 2014 and 2015, Namibia did not compete at Miss Universe. And you guys might be wondering, what is with Namibia competing so sporadically at Miss Universe throughout the early 2010s? And I definitely think that it was a financial issue. They had to either choose Miss World or Miss Universe. They couldn't, literally just couldn't afford to send a girl to both. So I think that is what the issue was there. In 2016, Namibia was back with Lizelle Estrezen, who unfortunately went unplaced. From 2016 onwards, we see a bit of a more, you know, stable thing going on with um, Namibia at Miss Universe, because I do think that most of these contestants actually opted to go to Miss Universe instead of Miss World. It was only last year that Namibia returned to Miss World since 2015. In 2017, we had Sune January at Miss Universe who went unplaced. In 2018, we had Salma Kamanya who went unplaced. And this is where we get to the woman who actually called out the Miss Namibia organization, Salma Kamanya. Guys, <laughs> Salma Kamanya, I absolutely love. I love her bravery in calling out the Miss Namibia organization the way that she did. She went, it was literally like a couple of months or a couple of weeks before she was due to crown her successor in 2019. Yeah, I think it was like literally two weeks before the, the time that Miss Namibia 2019 was supposed to be crowned. And this woman just, you know, she, she told everybody that she felt unsupported at Miss Universe. You know, she saw, I'm paraphrasing, she saw all of these contestants from all of these amazing pageant countries come with like 45 suitcases and an entire entourage of assistants to help. And she had to go to where the pageant was being held, Thailand, all alone you know, without a soul for comfort. And uh, it also, there was something about prize money, but I get confused because Salma actually was the match that ignited an entire wildfire of former Miss Namibia's coming forward. So there was Miss Namibia 2016 claiming to have spent like 300,000 Namibian dollars in her own right just to get her to Miss Universe because according to her, Miss Namibia didn't offer enough support, especially financially. Then there was Miss Namibia 2015, you know, saying something to the effect that she doesn't really want to do anything with Miss Namibia anymore. I think uh, the 2017 candidates came out and said something as well. So this, this actually sparked a whole a whole thing in Namibia <laughs> and um, of course a couple of weeks later the 2019 Miss Namibia was announced which was Nadja Breitenbach and she didn't place at Miss Universe either and then in 2020 of course unfortunately Namibia could not compete at Miss Universe um, because they didn't have a competition that year but of course in 2021 the Miss Namibia pageant was back and we had Chelsea Shikongu crowned as Miss Namibia 2021 and with Chelsea you know I still have this I still have this sort of sadness inside of me because I feel like Chelsea could have really placed at Miss Universe I had very high hopes for Chelsea, as did a lot of people around the world. But again, I think it comes back to the fact that the Miss Namibia organization, especially a few years prior, and I think still when Chelsea was Miss Namibia, they just do not have the resources, I think, to 
really set the girls up for the kind of success and you know the kind of preparedness needed to go up against a lot of big pageant countries yes there are some special special women in this world that really excel no matter what type of support they get from the outside but most of the time you know it's all about the type of support you have i mean look at the miss south africa organization those people they support their girls you know they back their girls all the way and they try to do their best to make things as easy for their girls and just to train their girls to the max make sure they have everything i mean they are wagner vessels who is just who does the most all of the time and we all know this I feel like that's what Namibia needs. We need someone who is very, very passionate, who really wants Namibia to succeed internationally. Because I don't think that the people who have been running Miss Namibia for the longest time uh, have really had the vision of the, you know, the fact that Namibia could really benefit from doing well internationally when it comes to Miss Universe and Miss World. Because Namibia could really benefit from doing well at Miss Universe and Miss World. Look at what has happened to South Africa. Because Miss South Africa didn't used to do that hot either. I mean, they didn't do as abysmally. But they, didn't, they weren't the powerhouse at Miss Universe that they are now. That they have been since Wagner Vessels joined the team. And I definitely think that he has made all of the difference there. So... I definitely think that every single country just needs at least that one person who really has the vision that it takes to do well internationally and then that international success will come back and fuel the success of the country's organization. So for instance, if Namibia did well at Miss Universe for a few years, there would be more interest in Miss Namibia. And I think that a lot of businesses all over Namibia and even perhaps in South Africa, Angola, Botswana, etc. would take note and be more open to sponsoring Miss Namibia, which means more resources, which means better quality, etc., etc. And then it's like a snowball effect of Miss Namibia just getting better and better. And it's not, it's not that difficult to find a good example of this because we live right next to one south africa has achieved this within the past like five six years so i think it's very much possible for namibia to become great at miss universe if only they had one person willing to really put in blood sweat and tears for the organization but unfortunately i feel like there's a lot of people at Miss Namibia sometimes who maybe are just living in the past or do not see the pageant industry as it is right now and maybe just see it as it was back when Michelle McLean was Miss Universe which was 30 years ago <laughs> Anyway guys, that's the history of Miss Namibia at Miss Universe. Very riveting content, exciting stuff. It's, it's actually quite heartbreaking to be honest with you. This year we have the gorgeous Cassia Sharpley representing us. I've mentioned this before, I absolutely adore Cassia. She's very good in interviews. She, I think, will definitely try her best to represent Namibia. I hope she's getting all of the support that she deserves. Overall, Namibia has competed at 26 editions of Miss Universe. Um, we have one win and one top 10 placements, 24 non-placements, which <laughs> does not bode well, does it? I mean, 24 non-placements out of 26 editions competed in which is like a 7% placement rate <laughs> Not very good, but like I said, I think I just hope that Namibia can find that one person to make huge change and recently i know listen i don't want to i don't want to act like nothing is changing at miss namibia recently 
um, NBC has taken over more and obviously there's a bit more of a budget because they now hold three licenses and they intend to send three women to three pageants every single year. So obviously the budget has increased somewhat and I hope with that they, you know, they include more passionate staff. I know there are, there is one very creative woman, especially Andeline Wieland, who recently has been very involved with Miss Namibia on the creative side. And I, I have seen improvements because of that. And I hope to see some improvements in terms of placements, you know, some results. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.